Uh, well, I like I said when I I scout them, I like to get in as close as I can, but not too close. Not too close, yeah. Usually, I you know find out where the hens are and then not get too close to the hens because you know the toms are very close. Set up somewhere as close to that, and when I start hearing the the hens go, going for a while, do very soft calls. I used I like to use a slate, mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, just kind of mimic what what the hens are doing. Yeah, and then uh, from from that, just you know hope hope that the that they come down and the tom falls and you get a good shot at them. Uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, if we have to move around a little bit, then I'll go to a paddle call. Mm -hmm. uh, something that the volume gets out a little bit more, not not too... A lot of guys like to hammer. You know, they yeah. say, should we hammer on them? I say, no, yeah. no. It's like you waking up in the morning and, mm. you know, shouting, good morning, I'm, yeah. I'm here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just talk normal with it. Yeah. And, uh, and just hope that 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 you know that you're fortunate enough that one comes in. Yeah, and then that's a great analogy because you control that call. Yeah, you can call loud anytime you want to. Sure, and you but don't have to. But that's an unnatural sound yeah. for yeah. for the turkeys in when the woods. It's, when it's windy, I find yeah. Yeah. I find calling louder. It, it it helps them locate you. And sometimes right. on windy days, when they when they an when a tom answers you, mm -hmm. I I find that uh, some, you better get ready because. Uh, yeah, they're not quite sure, so they come. Yeah. Sometimes they come right to you. Yeah, and you're right about that. Windy days, rainy days, you have to sort of induce it a bit. Yeah, you reach out right. Touch, but like Gary was but saying, on normal days, yeah. you know, when the sound does travel on its own, you yeah. don't need to hammer. Yeah, keep it soft. Keep mm. it soft. That's that's great advice, Gary. And in, and in the in in the on the property itself, Gary, in regards to the actual club, you got tons of places to set up, right? I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's lots of times when you go hunting at the club, you have a couple hundred acres to yourself, and yeah. you won't see another hunter. So you're not competing against somebody else, yeah. and you don't have to worry about getting cut off. Yeah. So you you when you connect with a bird, <laughs> yeah, it's it's your bird, and if you don't get them, you have another. You go out the next morning, try again. Right. So you not only have a quality hunt, but you're with a quality guy like Gary or Randy, and you're gonna have a quality time. In, yeah. a, in an area that holds lots and lots of game. It's the overall experience. Yeah. It's, it's not just pulling the trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. So, Randy. Yes. Now, you've been out there for a while, and you, you hunted with me a little bit in, in Columbia County. Yeah. That was a number of years ago. You saw some of that ground before you actually got involved with right. with uh, with uh, Jody. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, did, 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 in, in, in relation to the number of birds there, in regards of what you know that we have here, how do you compare it? Around here? Yeah. Around here, if, if, if you're working a turkey and uh, you make a mistake, you could be over for the for the day. Yeah. Um, what I've noticed out, out at Stevenson Outdoors is uh, you, you could work a turkey in the morning off the roost, and if he's not interested, you could pretty much turn around and start calling it in a different direction and, and potentially work another turkey. Yeah, yeah. So, Just because there's so many yeah. out there. Yeah. How so, many do you hear gobbling on a on a good morning? Oh, we had a we had a very great day this last Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Youth Weekend out in New York. Yeah. And uh, between the the bad weather that took place prior and afterwards, uh, we had about a two hour stretch Sunday morning that uh, the, the sun had come up. And if I didn't hear uh, if I didn't hear a dozen turkeys. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, wow. That is wild. Yeah. That's really. like that. That's like some spots out in the Midwest. Mm. You're not hearing 15 or 16. Yep. Yeah, great, and great morning. I want to talk a little more, Gary, about scouting in a minute, but like with the calling aspect, I mean, and what he was saying was so true. Right. About keeping the cost off, keeping it subtle. You got some of your diaphragms here. Why don't you just do some tree ups for us? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure people are watching us who may never have, are hearing what Gary's saying, but aren't really understanding quite, quite what he means. So, like those first tree ups in the morning, Rand. Okay, so Gary's un under the the roof setup, and uh, he's he's probably going to start hearing this. Oh, I'd be a goner. That's I'd exactly <laughs> what I hear. Yeah, it is exactly as a tree up. Makes the hair stand up in the back mm. of my neck. 
puts me right over the edge, man. Because you know, <laughs> I mean, it sounds good, of course, but you just know what can happen. And that's also taking the temperature of a turkey. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because yeah. if mm -hmm. you get a little bit more aggressive, yeah, you get a little bit more aggressive. It doesn't mean that you're, like Gary was saying, that you're waking the dead. A little more aggressive means, you know what I'm talking about, Randy. Yeah. Get a little more aggressive in those early morning tree up scenarios, and this is what it would sound like. That's not loud. No, no. That's not loud. That's just a little bit more aggressive when they're still up on those limbs. That's awesome. And what you're doing is you hope, what I like is after you do that, if a hen that's still up on the roost or on the ground starts responding to you, then you start mimicking that hen. It drives them crazy, it, doesn't it? It drives them crazy. Mm -hmm. It does. Folks, I'm here with Jody Bull, Gary Novak, and Randy Gleason. These guys are from the Stuyvesant Hunt Club. Randy, of course, many of you know, but Randy works out there now for them as a guide. And this is a lot of turkey knowledge we got right here, and we're talking turkey. Gary, what's some of the other important aspects of scouting that you'd like to touch on while you're here? Well, when, when they do start gobbling and they hit the ground, uh, if you miss on one, and if he just doesn't come in, like I say, you can, you can pattern them. Later on in the morning, if you know that uh, you've got a couple going way over that way or some over that way, if you don't get anyone, anyone that comes in to you, you know, you've got time to move on something else to where they're going to, exactly. you know, try to get ahead of them, you know, that you might have a little time to be able to harvest one over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, like this morning I was out and I had, I had a couple in front of me, just a couple of jakes, but I did hear some, uh, some uh, mature toms four or five hundred yards away from me. So then when I got done listening or watching these and then finally got up and walked, I took a walk over there and I was able to see where they were and trying to figure out how I could move in on them. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't, it's not like, you know, once they hit the ground and you miss your chance very early, you've got other opportunities to, to go in, you know, to make the, the rest of the day, you know, a little bit more, yeah. you know, enjoyable, right. you know, that you've got something to keep you occupied. Right, and you're scouting that way. Mm -hmm. Is showing you ways to move on birds like yeah. that before the season starts. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. that's brilliant in regards to, like, you know, you bump one now, doesn't maybe mean quite so much that it's going to be a week from now. Right. So right. you're finding those ways around mm -hmm. in there, and that's smart. Mm -hmm. That's huge. What What are you seeing right now in, in regards to activity? The gobblers still together out there? Or? Um... No, I'm seeing that the gobblers are kind of splitting up. Okay. Um, I've a few hens, followed by maybe one tom. To me, in, in the area that I hunt, it looks like that they're breeding the hens, but they're starting to the not as much. I mean, what I should say is I think the hens are getting bred out. Mm -hmm. I think they're running out of their hens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so hopefully this coming week, It'll be a little bit easier <laughs> <That's how laughs> to, to get a get a, a nice mature tom coming in looking for yeah you know for a girlfriend. <laughs> what do you think, Jody? I mean, you see the same thing? Uh, I I think that the best hunting this year in our area is going to be toward the end, yeah, end yeah. of the season. Yeah, I think it was a hard winter compared to last year uh, when we had warm weather. I think the the temperature plays a big role with uh, hens sitting on their nest yeah. and not having their eggs freeze and that yeah. dictates what's going to happen mm -hmm. and it sets the pace so I, I think the warmer weather is going to come and the hens will be sitting and the toms will be looking for their, for their girlfriends toward the end of the season. Uh, yeah. Jody mentioned about the hard winter. I'm surprised we do have the amount of birds that we do have that I've been seeing. Yeah, I, I thought that they were really going to take it on the chin really bad because yeah. we had real hard winter and two layers of ice in between. I, I thought a lot of them were going to starve to death, but yeah. when I started seeing them, like I said, I've been l watching them since uh, the middle of March and yeah. seeing more activity. I'm seeing more and more birds and I'm, I'm more impressed with the amount that are still out there. I was, I was kind of worried at first. Yeah, yeah, but you're seeing them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well guys, you know, believe it or not, we got about four minutes left. And there's a couple things that I want to touch on quickly here be, before we go. And I want I want to get to you, Randy, in regards to a question about Colin, but scouting wise, to sort of wrap it up here and give me a, like a one minute summation, what do you think is the most important thing, Gary? I mean, 
people that are watching that have never hunted before, what's the one thing to tell them about scouting that you think is really important? Uh, just, uh, I mean, if you can find a spot where you can listen to birds gobble, you don't have to get in that close. You can just stand outside your car and listen to birds gobble if, yep. if they're that close to the road or whatever. And just stand there and listen to them and listen how long they, they gobble, you know, uh, from like an, a half hour in the morning. And that's all they gobble. And then they, they quiet down. But you really don't need to get in that close. I how like close is too close? To, how close is how too close? How close do you think is too close? Oh, gosh. <laughs> right under the tree. <laughs> no, I, I probably about. I like to stay about sixty yards away from where the where the toms are yeah. gobbling because I know that there's hens even closer. Yeah, and I don't want to get that close to to let them know that I'm there. Yeah, I mean that's great advice, folks. Coming from a guy who knows, I mean, sixty yards, seventy yards. Mm -hmm. That's getting any closer than that, you know, you're you're spinning the you're going to be seen. Roulette wheel. And when the foliage is out, you can be a little more bold. Oh yeah, uh, the season, sure. You're talking those early days, which mm -hmm. is important. It's wide open now. You can, you're, you'll be seen, real close. Exactly, because they can see as good as eagles. Sure, they, they can, can hear like deer. If they can smell. Randa, we never get one. Never, no. never get one. Never. Hey, so Randy, a tip on calling. I mean, something that somebody who's watching, in like a minute or so here, somebody that's watching and hasn't hunted before. What's yep. what, what's a caller like you, kind of a tip? Are you going to give that person? I like to take a turkey's temperature. Um, you've obviously done your scouting. You know there's turkeys there. If uh, if the turkey's responding to the real soft calling, stay with it. Um, if you need to get aggressive, and it, and it works, stay with that. But uh, but otherwise, if uh, the turkey isn't very uh, very responsive to your calls, and uh, and you know they're there, mm. then. Just let that turkey know you're there by some soft yelps once in a while, maybe even a single cluck. And patience is a virtue. Yeah. Sit it out. Yeah. And that's great advice from one of the best callers I know. You Thank can't you. get better advice than that. Thank you. It makes me think that it's time they get your hon on, Mojo with Ducky Boys. <laughs> that's what I think. You're getting me all worked up, Randall. All worked up listening to you. Oh, God bless you, buddy. Jody, in about a minute, a few words on the Stuyvesant Club. You want people out there, I know you do. It's a great place to go. It's a great place to hunt. Joey, tell us and take us out of here about it. I, I know there's a lot of people that that would say, well, why go to a place and try to, you know, get a turkey, go with a guide, pay for a guide when I can go in my backyard. And what I say to everybody, if you come hunt with us just once for the experience, especially a beginner, you will cut down on all the mistakes and you'll learn a lot in in a two day hunt that you're going to bring home and be a more successful hunter. Yeah, man, that is a that is prolific. What you're going to learn from these guys, you can't buy. You can't buy it. It's priceless. Yeah. Because it'll take it takes a long time t to learn how to be successful. Yep. You know, over and over and over oh, again. Great point. Yep. And, and not only are you going to learn a lot, but you're going to guys like Gary and Randy and yourself, you're going to have fun with it. You're going to have a blast. You're going to have a blast. In a great facility. I've seen it. In a super area. You can't ask for more. With a number of other other hunters. Right. Yeah. Mixing right. with the crowd. Right. All great guys, mm -hmm. too. You have other great guides out there, too, don't you, Jody? Yeah, we have several guides, lots of property, and we love to have fun. <laughs> and you love to have them out there. That's Stuyvesant Hunt Club, Stuyvesant Manor. Yes. www.stuyvesant. Quick ran. How about the food? Everybody, Bonnie, Bonnie every, is one of the yeah, best cooks Everybody out there. that comes, they say they gain weight. <laughs> www.stuyvesanthuntclub.com, 518-929-929-0137. My good friend Jody Bull, Gary Novak, Randy Gleason, some of the best turkey hunters we know. They should be called the turkey thugs. It's time to get your hunt on. Stuyvesant Hunt Club. Guys, we'll get you back here in the fall. We'll do a deer show. Look Thank you so much her. for being here. Sure. Until next time when we're together again on the Ridge, remember, be safe, be smart. Keep the integrity of our sport at the highest level that, that you possibly can. Watch out for the other guy. Until we're together again here on the Ridge, my best wish for all of you is good hunting. <laughs>